Hello everybody and welcome to another video of me. I'm Milky Marsh and I'm gonna be playing the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Now I did play a little bit of it just now, so I can tell you some things like there is gonna be a lot of reading in this game. This game is pretty much 99% reading. There is some fighting, but it's mostly just reading. Selecting new game will delete your yes. Okay, welcome back player. Let me begin a new journey. Which hero will you, which hero will you take into fire top mountain this time? This chick's called Oriana, I believe. She's like my, I don't know. I'm gonna take Alexandra of Black Sand. I mean, Black Sand, it just sounds cool. There's also Dekion Strom, Runika Ikardi, and Aaron Godspeed, but Black Sand just sounds cool. Sounds like she came from a really cool place. You have chosen this chick. If you like, you may select a different hero. If you are happy with your choice, then you may travel to Firetop Mountain and start your adventure. Alternatively, if you want to take part in a combat tutorial, activate free read mode. Or want to learn more about the rules of the game, select tutorial, rules, and free read. What's a free read? I don't know. Travel to fire top. I'm gonna skip the tutorial because I've already done that. You just fight these weird uh, training dummy things. The villagers of Anvil cheered with excitement as you began your two day hike to fire top mountain. Cries of return to us safely, Alexandra, and may the luck of the gods be with you rang out. Your fame reaches even the remote towns like Anvil. Your mysterious patron, a sorcerer known to you only as Keith, I call him Keish, because that's what it sounds like, wants you to seek a massive r ruby known as the Eye of the Cyclops and give it to Zagor, the warlock who rules this mountain. When you asked Keith about the significance of the ruby, the sorcerer only smiled and said, You'll see. Well, I just realized it's a pun. It's called the Eye of Cyclops, and it says you'll see it. Yeah, you'll see the eye. Mm. The citizens who live in the foothills of the mountain fear Zagor, and have been very reluctant to tell you anything that may help you find him, fearing for their own safety. You have mixed feelings about the adventure ahead, and you just hope that Keisha's instructions are honorable, and you do not let the local people down. One thing is clear though, you will not be dealing with any ordinary wielder of magic. You must be on your guard. Also, I think I'm gonna kill Keish and Zagor. I don't know why, I just do. It takes you two days to reach the menacing looking mountain with its sharp rocky crags that jut out at unnatural angles. At the top you can see the eerie red coloring, probably some savage vegetation, which has given the mountain its name. You approach a cave, a known entrance used by a local band of orcs. Your hand gripping the hilt of your long sword as you consider what dangers may lie ahead. Your adventure starts here. Also, one of the things I really like about this game is on these pictures, you can click them and the color goes away. Make it look cooler. Peer into the gloom. Yay, very gloom. You see dark slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. Hearing faint scurrying to the east, you light your lantern. Click to continue. With the smell of orc up my nose, I have a feeling I'm going to meet some formidable foes. That ruby is in this mountain somewhere, so I'm going to have to ask politely, using my sword, of course. Step warily into the blackness. You stand in a dark, slimy cave entrance. What happens if I... Oh, okay, it's just the same thing. Approach the fork ahead. Yeah, I arrived at the junction. And what happens if I turn east? I went right last time. There's a uh, orc there and dogs and stuff. I'm gonna go east this time. I played it a little. I went like three, four ways the other way, like steps, and then I stopped. The sound, uh, the sound of scurrying continues ahead of you, as well as the sound of heavy footsteps. Whatever is marching along the corridor can only be trouble. A few yards ahead, at the limit of the light cast by your lantern, you catch sight of a cleft in the tunnel wall. Why would I want to hide? Prepare to face with approach. I'm gonna hide. We shutting shuttering your lantern, you wait with bated breath in the darkness. Without knowing how many creatures there are, 
I should stay out of sight. You listen intently as the footsteps come closer and then pass by your hiding place without the owners of those footsteps ever knowing you are there. Jump out and surprise what lurks in the corridor and leave your hiding place and you east stay hidden from the danger a little longer. I'm gonna kill them. Jump out and surprise what lurks in the corridor. Boom! Weapon drawn, you burst from your hiding place and surprise the two greenish creatures clad in rough leather armor patrolling the warlock's domain. Hmph, orcs, just like in Darkwood Forest. Luckily, they're cowardly and easy to overcome. With the orcs caught unawares, you are able to wound one severely before the creature knows what is happening. With a heavy cleaving blade in one hand, the second orc is ready for you. Fight the orcs. The ones are already almost dead. Fight. Okay. Attack. Boom! Dead already. Piercing jab. Why? Come on. Piercing strike. Attack. You're all dead. Not very good at this usually. You lost no stamina and gained four souls. I have defeated the orcs. Quick search of the orcs' bodies turns up a handful of gold pieces, a crude bone charm, and a half eaten rat on a stick. Why would they eat rats? Five gold pieces. Take the orc's bone charm. I'm gonna take it. You pocket the bone charm, trying not to wretch as you get too close to the orc's stinking corpse. Perhaps it'll be useful later. Perhaps. Cautiously, you make your way further down the dank tunnel. Choose the west path or the east path. I'm gonna take west. Wait, no, I wanted to go back. Ah, I wanted to go back. Oh, come on. Wait, oh, okay. Oh, well. I'm gonna go back here. Also, this game reminds me a lot of... Uh, what I've heard of Dungeons and Dragons. A little way along the passage where you come to what is clearly a sentry post. Yeah. Ooh. You approach with caution and can see another orc, this time on his own, in leather armor asleep at his post. I hope all of Zagor's minions are this lazy. This could be my quickest adventure yet. Carefully approach the sleeping orc. As he is asleep, it should be no trouble for you to wake him so you can get some information. Wake the orc and interrogate him. You prod the orc awake with the pommel of your sword. He leaps to his feet, flailing for his weapon, which you swiftly kick out of his reach. I am Alexandra of Black Sand. I seek the eye of the Cyclops. The orc seems to recognize you, or at least he recognizes your sharp sword and heavy armor. Which I've said last time, I'm not in. I'm in robes. You can see there, on robes, not in heavy armor. He does not speak the trade tongue, but his shrudging and sniveling make it clear to you that you are not going to get any useful information out of him. And then instead of killing him, you tie him up and gag him. Should have killed him. I'm gonna fight these two though. The passageway begins to widen until you enter a cave. However, blocking the cave's exit are two of the ugliest creatures you've ever seen. They have the proportions of dogs, but their hide is rough and scaly. Each beast is chained to the cave wall, secured to their br thick brass collars. Yo, these things sound bad. Yep, that was them. They sound worse than they look. The two orc hounds begin to snarl and strain at their chains. They cannot reach you, but their chains are long enough that, should you approach, you will not be able to escape their slavering jaws. I've come across these poor creatures before on previous quests. Orcs generally don't treat them very well, which can make them quite vicious. You are going to have to deal with them quickly, one way or another, before they attract the attention of an orc patrol, or maybe something even worse. Draw your weapon, do what has to be done. If I distract them with food, then they just bite me. No, they stab me with their tusks. Drawing your weapon, you prepare to engage the orc hounds in combat. However, because they are chained to the walls, their movement is limited. Yay! Fight! So, where are they gonna go? Uh, I don't know. Can I just stay in one place? Quick, 
jab. I don't think you're gonna jab him. Hey, don't run away. Attack there. Dang it. Attack. Oh, uh, you can't move there. You can move there. And do piercing strike. Boom! No quick jab. Dead! Victory! I lost no stamina and gained four souls. What do I need souls for? Is that how I level up? You have defeated the Orcans. Yay! This is a bench over here. Leaving the cave as quickly as you can, you follow the new passageway as it turns north. Rest ye here, weary. Rest ye here, weary traveler. Sit against the wall as a wooden bench where you may rest. Uh, I'm gonna rest. This chick just says it's really good to rest. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. Plus five stamina. No, I lost none. Continue along the passageway. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a rasping sound which may be some sort of creature snoring. Open the door. I can't see him there. The door opens to reveal a small smelly room. In the center of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Judging by the remains of the dwarven architecture, this room has not changed much from its original purpose. Sleeping quarters for the night watch. Proving that your educated guess is correct, you see a green skinned orc asleep on a straw ma mattress. I wonder what's in the wooden box. Try to steal the box without waking the orc. Trading softly, you, you easily extract the wooden box from underneath, from under the table. Your luck holds out as you easily back out of the room without waking the orc. Another thing, this person I'm playing as has luck, so he's a lot luckier than other people. You leave the room and open the box in the passage. A hidden compartment has been knocked loose, revealing a cache of gold pieces. There is also a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. I want to keep the mouse for myself, but she lets him go after the year. Yeah. You release the mouse, which goes off down the passage. The mouse is going to go and is going to tell everyone that I'm here. Should have killed him. You arrive at another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. Try opening the door. And another box. The floor opens to reveal a small. The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the center of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which stands a, on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw. Okay. Open the box. There are carved runes on the box. Due to your excellent education, you can roughly translate these into snake surprise. Did you pick it up, something rattles with them. Yeah, uh, there's a green snake. You open the lid and small snakes pop out of the box, eager to bite your wrist. Even though you're surprised, you manage to dodge them. You're gonna fight the two snakes. These snakes suck. I almost died with these stupid snakes. Don't. Don't. Okay, I'm gonna attack him again. No! Attack! Boom! Attack! Piercing strike. Dang it! Attack! Flashing. Please let me win. Yay, I won. Attack. No. Uh, okay. No, I wanna move there. And then quick jab him. And I did a lot better than last time. Last time I lost eight stamina. You have defeated the snakes. The box has fallen to the ground during the fight with the snakes. There appears to be nothing else inside it. It must have been a practical joke made by one of the orcs. You decide to continue to head deeper into the orcs' barracks. Leave the empty room. Yeah, that's about as far as I got. North or east? Never eat. So I'm gonna go east because the other one is never. Which was a bad idea, but. 
Jeez, what are they doing here? You follow the passage as it slopes downwards until you find yourself at the corner of a large chamber. The architecture suggests that it was originally made by dwarven hands, but it has clearly been repurposed by the orcs. It appears to be, have been turned into some kind of training room. Dotted around the chamber are a number of wooden posts that bear the marks of axes and other weapons. A cacophonous din echoes around the hall as green skinned creatures in leather armor either strike close to the swords or each other with wooden cudgels. Yeah, fight against yourself. I don't want to kill you all. You guess that this is what passes for a training session among the brutish orcs. If I keep to the shadows at the edges of the hall, I might be able to enter a scene. At the eastern end of the chamber, there are two doors. Halfway along the north wall of the hall is another doorway, secured by an iron gate. Okay, I can go into the iron gateway to the north. Doors east end. Burst in the room and take on all the orcs with overwhelming odds. No way, I'm gonna die. Go back the way you came and choose the other part. I'm going to go to the iron gateway. How many of them didn't see me? I literally just walked around them. The orcs are so engrossed in what they're doing and making so much noise while they are doing it that you, they do not notice you as you make your way into the iron gate, open it, and enter a small room behind Quantains. Those are the things I've wanted to store. At the center stand what looks like scarecrows made of battered armor. The supporting poles sunk in this strange arrangement of wooden cogs and gears. As the gate swings shut behind you, the training contains shudder as the activate. Your education has taught you about such strange uh, constructs. These contains are constructed by magical means for, by sorcerers for training their troops. You brace yourself for an attack. There are just two of them. Good. Fight. Attack. Boom. Boom! Dang it! Attack! Boom! Dead! These guys are so stupid! I've got 23 souls! Cool! I lo you lost no stamina and gained 4 souls! I have defeated the Quantains! The Quantains eventually grind to a halt, your blows having irreparably ruined the wooden workings. You find nothing of use in this training room. Try to reach the eastern end of the wall, wall without being spotted. Don't spot me. I've got good luck. Fortunately, you make it to the far side of the chamber without any of the no orcs noticing. One door has a dented shield nailed to it, while other with a battered helmet hanging from it. So one is shield, one is armor. Okay. Poor creatures. Their eyesight must be as bad as their ears. Uh, helmet or shield? H or S? H. Because H comes before S. Ooh, weapons. You find yourself in a cramped room full of battered helmets, rusting hubox, and suits of leather armor. The contents of this armor is inferior compared to what you are wearing, but it strikes you that if you were wear a few choice items over the top of your own gear, you might be able to pass yourself off the north. Ooh, I could disguise myself. You take an orc helm. And, and assorted pieces of armor attempting to hide your own features. You gag as you do so, the stench is almost unbearable. However, it might just fool the orcs. Unfortunately, all, the armor is rather cumbersome, making you a bit more clumsy. Minus one skill. Oh, You plan your next move. Leave the, leave the orc armor. Um, open the door with a helmet, investigate the gateway. Oh, okay. Open the door with a battered shield. So, yeah. There's an orc. You find yourself inside a moderately sized chamber and are immediately hit by a wall of heat. On the far side of the chamber is a crude forge, its coals glowing red hot. In front of it, a heavy set orc is hammering at the dense and damaged breastplate over an anvil. Nearby are two goblin assistants. One of them is eagerly watching its master repairing the armor, while the other is carrying a spear in the corner. Evidently, this miserable creature has been recently punished. It's warm in here. Not sure I want to hang around. Hearing you enter the orc armor and looks up, an angry expression on his ugly face. Face the armor. What do you want, the armor grunts? Get out of here, I'm busy. Uh, do, I'll do as I said, I don't want to kill him. Go, 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 go. 
Working your way back to the western side of the wall, you decide to take the northerly of the two exits available to you, reasoning that this one will take you deeper into the mountain more quickly. Leave the training room. Okay. Just going. I missed the door! He the door. Come on, go back. Go back. You arrive at the end of the passage at three way junction. Take the east path. Whoa, the west path. In that part we go, I'm gonna go this way, because I don't want to go that way. Wait, there's a sign there for a boss battle. You listen at the door and you're angry shouting coming from within. Open the door and investigate. Okay. You open the door to a large room. A large chair behind a solid looking table suggests that someone, or something, of rank uses this room. Uh, obviously it's a slave master. In a corner of the room stands a strange looking orc with a warty face. Standing over a small orc. With the whip in his hand he has been beating a servant who is whimpering beneath him. What has happened to that poor creature's hand? It looks deformed. Which creature? The guy with the whip or the other guy? I don't see anything wrong with that guy's arm. Take them both. Bring the orc and hope the servant will aid you. I'm gonna do that one. Thanks for nothing. Try to assist the orcish servant. As you spring to the orc, a servant rises to his feet, picks up a hefty wooden stick and joins the melee. But to your disappointment, he attacks you. Ungrateful. Escape quickly through the nearest orc. Continue the fight. The battle commences. Fight the orcs. Oh well. Fight! Okay, he's gonna attack. I'm gonna move there. Um, push and try. Boom. Move. 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 Attack. Dang it. No, come on. Oh, come on. Why'd you have to hit me? Attack. Ah, uh, why are you going that way? Fishing strike. Boom. Die. Yay. Attack. Ah, uh, come on. Stop moving. Move. Attack. Yay, I killed him. Piercing strike. Piercing strike. Oh, come on, man. Move. Attack. Stop moving! Move. Attack. Ah, oh, why are you moving that way? Move. Uh, piercing strike. Oh, come on, dude. Move. I'm gonna guess he's going that way. Yes! Move. Attack. Move. Push him straight. Oh, come on, man. Okay, I'm just gonna attack him. Clashing. I don't want to clash because I got minus one skill. And that's why I don't want to clash because he hit me. I lost two stamina and gained four souls. I defeated them. The green blood of the dead orc smells foul as it seeps from their bodies. There is a chest nearby. You step around the corpses and decide to investigate. It is of sturdy construction, made of strong oak and iron, and it is firmly locked. Try to smash it, leave it, try and smash it. The lock was obviously inadequate. It flies off and lands on the floor several meters away. You lift up the heavy lid and your eyes widen as you see the gold sheen coming from within. A fair number of gold pieces on side. In one corner lies a small black bottle with a tight glass stopper, containing a liquid of some kind. But as you are admiring this treasure, you hear a soft click and wince in pain as a small dart shoots forward into your stomach. Ouch. Minus three stamina? You sink to the floor. You pull out the dart and decide to bandage the wounded. This gives you some relief, but you are still weak. You decide to take it easy and examine the contents of his chest. 
There's a stash of gold pieces and the label on the bottle shows it to be a potion of invisibility. Good for one dose. 25 gold, yay! Yes, I will take the bottle, I'm just gonna take everything. You take the potion of invisibility. What a find! This will definitely come in handy during your adventure. Yes, I need to sit on the bench because there seems some food. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sit on the bench, and five stamina will fill everything. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventures. That's five stamina, and there I'm full. Um, head north. Or so I'm gonna head south. As you're about to descend the steps, you hear a commotion in the room below. It sounds like a large number of orcs have entered and are not happy. Perhaps they realize that they have an intruder and are looking for you. It would be foolish to go that way now. I'm going to head north. Quickly move through the north door. Boing, boing, boing. Okay, so I'm going to leave this episode here. This is a really interesting game. A really cool design. I'd love to play more of it, and I am going to play more, and I, I think I'm going to finish this game, but yeah, it's really interesting, I like the map as well, but there is a lot of reading, as you can obviously see by the millions of hours spent reading, I like this map, you bounce around to checkpoints, but yeah, this was fun. I uh, hope to see you all in the next video. This is the end. Goodbye.